Greetings, this is Stanley Simulus, aka the Stanley, the spiritual entrepreneur. Welcome to the Your Numbers, Your Journey podcast, a podcast that's happened to the most unique and accurate numerology in the cosmos. And I have with me today Jeremy Britton from Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. He is a coach, a keynote speaker, an author, and a strategy business coach. Welcome, my friend. Thank you for having me on the show. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, if you can explain to the viewers, uh, Jeremy, a little bit about uh, what you do, because you've had some very influential people come on your show and you're also a producer and um, you know, you've helped a lot of people with your, your own podcast and so forth. Can, so can you summarize a little bit about what you do? Uh, yeah. Summarize my entire life into just 60 seconds or less. That's, that's pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I became an entrepreneur uh, at a very young age. I think I was 18, 19 when I started my, my first business. And I, I, I learned a lot in school about how to get a job. And that's the way the education system is up. It is set up. It doesn't actually teach you how to start your own business. The education system teaches you how to write a resume, how to pass an exam, but it doesn't teach you how to pay your taxes, get a bank loan, start a business, have a great idea and become a, become a dot-com billionaire. So I've, I've learned a lot from my mentors and coaches. I've learned a lot from other people. And I like to teach that stuff as well. Uh, there's, there's a lot of street smart education, which I never got until after I left home. And this is the education that I'm giving people now. I've also been volunteering at schools for probably 10 or 15 years, teaching high school kids that, you know, yeah, it's great to, to think that you can get your uni degree and get a job. But number one, what if there's no jobs out there when you get out of uni? And number two, what if you don't actually like the job? So it is possible to actually start a business, run a business. And if you've got the strategy, you've got the mindset, you can run multiple businesses. You know, obviously, you know, successful people like Richard Branson can have multiple, multiple businesses and they're not actually working in them. Whereas the education system will teach you to get one job and you just work in that one job and have one concentration. But it's good for the, for the kids, they say, who can't concentrate in school because they're always distracted looking out the window. And these are the kind of kids who have got multiple points of focus and they can actually run multiple businesses and things like that if you harness the energy of these people. That's a very good point that you just mentioned there because um, the, the youth obviously... There's, there's a lot of youth now, especially in the digital age economy and the digital entrepreneurs and so forth that are successful in many businesses because they've managed to master the keys of, say, social media. And um, you said if you can harness the energy, because some people may be scattered, so if you can harness that energy into their gift, I mean, because everyone's got that gift and that passion, um, would it be fair to say if they can, as you said, harness that, they can then uh, strategize that and monetize that? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's some people who are really good at focusing on one task and they'll sit there in front of their spreadsheet for five, six, seven hours until the spreadsheet is, is fully balanced. And that's good. You know, those are the guys who are destined to be accountants. And then you've got someone like, like Branson. I think, you know, if he was born today, he would have been diagnosed with either Asperger's or ADHD, possibly both. But back when he was born, they didn't have those diagnoses. So he could have just been the kid who was constantly distracted or by harnessing that ability and saying, okay, I'm good at running multiple projects. I'm going to run multiple projects. You know, it's just not getting too bogged down in each one. So, and, and learning to manage people because at the end of the day, your business is run on people. And even if it's, even if it's just a business of yourself, you've still got your suppliers, you've still got your customers, you've still got, you know, your support team and that sort of stuff. So you've got to manage your relationships with people and people who can manage multiple relationships at multiple levels, they're going to be the ones who are much more successful. So in relations to your journey being a business coach and, and you know, you've interviewed some, some fairly um, influential people on your show as well. So, you know, by interviewing people, you would have seen say pattern recognition and seen some traits of what's success and what isn't. And um, could you give away say three key secrets that uh, for aspiring entrepreneurs out there, that they can take away to help them go along their journey? I'll give you one big secret. Okay. <laughs> that just blows the other three out of the water. Um, I mean, if, pro probably everybody who's in the entrepreneurial space or everybody who's ever watched The Secret or any of that sort of stuff, they would have read a little book written back in the 1930s called Think and Grow Rich. And that's kind of been the, the Bible of the self-help and, and, and business development movement for, for many, many years, almost 100 years now. But back then, you got to understand in the context, in the 1930s, you couldn't actually talk about meditation because you know, prayer was something done by the Catholics and the Methodists and the Anglicans. 
and meditation was something done by the pagans and we can't talk about that that's evil and that's bad like that was the view of the church at the time but reading the book think and grow rich it's not actually about thinking you're not thinking about spreadsheets and you know um the author's talking about going into your space and imagining you've got Leonardo da Vinci sitting down at a boardroom table with you, imagining you've got Henry Ford with you. And this is visualization and meditation before it became before it became popularized. So when I was interviewing people on my show, and I've had you know millionaires and multi multi millionaires and all these sort of people on my show, um, ask them like, how did you become successful? What got you started? Blah blah blah. But every single one out of like 150 people I interviewed, every single one I asked them what type of meditation do you do? I didn't ask them, do you meditate? I asked them, what type of meditation do mm -hmm. you do? And I've even got to ask Arnold Schwarzenegger that question. And every single one of these people, every single one of these very, very successful people in their particular field, uh, because Arnold, Arnold doesn't have as much money as Richard Branson, but he's become very successful in, in politics and in movies and in bodybuilding and that sort of stuff. Every single one of these people, without exception, every single one was a meditator. Some chanted, some did Vipassana, some did Zazen, some did, you know, you know swimming or jogging. They, they'd meditate while they were actually doing their exercise. Every single one of these people was a meditator. And most of them had never been asked because a lot of other people who interview these fabulously successful people ask them about the business and sometimes they ask them about their mindset, but no one had ever asked them, are you a meditator? What sort of meditation do you do? It's a, so, it's a phenomenal question to ask. And... and um, meditation, I mean, prayer is so important, I've found, because it resonates a certain frequency. And, and whether it be, say, say, Christian, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islamic, or Jewish, or what have you, each uh, religion or philosophy, if you will, understand that prayer plays a role and miracles can happen. Mm. And from the ancients, because I'm a big believer in ancient wisdom, what I do in numerology and astrology is derived from these energies that we get from the planets in terms of saying these prayers at specific moments, it can cause an alchemical, magical thing. And these very successful people, I strongly believe, that that's a phenomenal question that you've asked them. I, I believe they practice uh, at some sort of point, something along those lines of the prayers at specific times for them to be in that zone. Mm -hmm. um, like, I mean, even I remember Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, watching him pumping iron where he's out psyching Lou Ferringo. Yeah. I mean, you know, very smart man in terms of a person who grew up in his upbringing, then he's, he's gone and made in his mindset that he's going to become the greatest. And, but it's not just the physical attributes. He used the whole mental, the spiritual, the, the psyching ability, the psychology to get where he got. And then to mm. transform that into politics, he obviously, I believe, just used the same strategies. It's just a different um, vehicle, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but that, yeah, that's very good. I like, can think and go rich. Uh, I'm not sure if you know, but with Napoleon Hill, because a lot of people have forwarded his book, and it's a great book, and I've read a lot of forwards. There was an audio narration that came after that, and they never released the book. It's called Outwitting the Devil. And it's, mm. a, it's a very good narration about two people going back and forth. And, you know, Napoleon Hill was beyond his time. He was talking about how to eat and nutrition and, how, and smoking and cigarettes and the spiritual world. Like, he was very much into prayer. People didn't realize how metaphysical this person was. Mm, and, yeah. and that and that audio narration, in my belief, takes the, uh, Napoleon Hill to uh, think very rich to another level. Because um, he talks about prayer and he talks about how you, how the spirits and if you drink too much, if you eat too much bad food, you know, it's got negativity inside of you. And it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, and... And, you know, a lot of these successful people too, you see them, they're not like very obese or overweight. They're probably, they, they look physically intact because they're actually in tune with their body, I've found. Yeah. Would that be fair yeah. to say? Absolutely. It, it's all connected. Um, and whether, whether you're going from the religious perspective, whether you're going from the spiritual perspective, whether you're going from quantum physics, everything is interconnected. And I have a lot of clients who come to me and they say, you know, show me how to triple my business or show me how to make another million dollars or, you know, I've got this issue, I've got this problem with my business. And I always look at the business and go, okay, oh, you've got a problem with, you know, your clients are, are not paying on time or your suppliers are not supplying on time or your staff aren't doing the things that you want them to do when you're out of the office and things like that. And every single business problem comes back to the personal problem. If I'm sitting with a business owner and they say, you know, my staff aren't doing this and they're not doing this, they're not doing that. I'm always having trouble. I have to sack staff and hire new staff. I can't get good staff. It's a problem within the person. Mm. And it's usually a communication issue. And then 
I actually asked them, like, you know, get away from the business. Let's talk about how's your home life? How's your relationship with your loved ones? How's your relationship with your family? I'm like, oh, yeah, we fight or we argue. Cool. Now I know they're the center of the problem. And I can start working on the person actually on their own psyche and find that the business suddenly magically transforms because the problem was never the staff. The problem is the staff reacting to how they are. And when you change yourself, everything around you changes. That's, uh, so you're going deeper. It's like, like, uh, it's like the why. What's their why that's driving them? And obviously, if they've got those personal issues, it transforms the energy, transforms in the business side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, um, when you were interviewed, like you, you said, you interviewed over 150 you know, people and so forth. Who's been the most, uh, I know it's a tough question because they're all got unique gifts and, and who's been the most prominent person that you've interviewed? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a challenge because there, there's, there's a lot of different people. Like I have, I have one guy who was a you know, multimillionaire who went bankrupt and then bounced back. Um, had another guy who had cancer and bounced back from that. Another one who had a stroke and then bounced back from that. Um, another guy who was homeless and, and massively in debt. Um, six figures and then a few years later he was a multi-millionaire um, and I've, I've had one guy who was a, as a Tibetan Buddhist monk for seven years you know, he, he was a former business owner um, had some personal issues he gave up his business and gave away all of his money burned his clothes burned his hair and went and you know literally meditated in the mountain for seven years and then came back down from the mountain and started the business actually teaching meditation and, and spirituality and business and this sort of stuff. So there's so many standouts that I can't actually put a finger on one. But for, for me, wealth has always been, or for the last you know, 15 years, it's, it's been about more than just making money. It's about health. It's about emotions. It's about physical health. It's about health of relationships. It's about having a wealth of energy and abundance and, and that sort of stuff. So you and I are both operating on about three hours sleep right now. Yeah. <laughs> we're still we are, having we a good time no that's right like i i, I set my clock and i thought geez is it 8 30 brisbane time so i get an extra hour or not but it was 7 30 brisbane time <laughs> um but yeah no it's because I, I talk about the spirituality side of the world health and the balance and i apply it from i'm a big believer in the, in the celestial planets and i've studied from the vedas and hinduism and, um, in terms of the vedic mathematics and the scientific and the practical side of things and that's why meditation is a science and a prayer um, people, you, you, you've said something very, very uh, important for people to do. People have a different angle of what meditation may be. Yeah. It may not necessarily be, you know, sitting on a rock and, and meditating. It's their own little ritual, if you will, that they're comfortable with doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and from your like date of birth, you're, you're born 2nd of April, 1972. And the way I do that is the, the sun and moon is your identity number. So you, your the second of the fourth is two plus four, six, your identity number, your your first number is a six. The other planets are, uh, is, accompanies what I call the character and the type of dentin. Now, the 1972, if you add that up, is one plus nine is 10, plus nine is 19, one plus nine is 10 is one. So your type of identity is a one. So your identity is a six, your type of identity is a one. You add, you add those together, six plus one equals seven. That is what is called your life path number or your character, which is the seven. So now you have six, one, seven. We add that again together. It's seven plus seven. Six plus one is seven. Is fourteen. Narrow down to a single digit is fun. So your ESP code, your essence soul purpose code, is six one seven five. So five is the person who could be in internet marketing, traveling, very intellectual, multitasking. Uh, the seven is the spirituality side, the metaphysical, the religion, the philosophy, the quantum physics, mechanics. The one is the individual leader, likes their alone time, and the six is the responsible person. The, the nutritionist, the, the, the power, the, the guidance, the messenger, the networker side of things. So with those four numbers, you can maneuver your journey according to the strengths, the weaknesses of yourself with other people in the country you live in and also in the running day and the month and the year of the person. Um, and from the Chinese, you're a water rat and the characteristic of that is you're smart and inventive. And from the Pythagorean, if you look at the noughts and crosses, you have the bottom row going across being the, the one, four, seven. You have the hour of practicality. So you're practical in your form of business coaching and the spirituality that you do with, where you have the seven in you from the six, one, seven, five. Um, and of course, in the areas, areas are very good to get things off the ground. Um, and, and people know that from the Western side of things. And with 2018, the energies of earth 
with the other planets revolving around that is is the, those those energies started to kick in September 15, 2017. So Earth is beginning to run now the two year, and and that's good as a generalist. But specifically, how does it relate to Jeremy being a six, the identity number, not the third number? So he's Jeremy's kicking into an eight year. So he had a seven year in 2017, which is a little bit more so a little bit more into the spiritual and metaphysical thing, and and now it's starting to kick into the money year. So you can maximize your your years and your months and your days according to those four numbers of the ESP code. Um, would that be a bit accurate a little bit about yourself in terms of your strengths and weaknesses and attributes and what have you? Yeah, I'm, I'm just wishing that I had have actually known this stuff 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to form, form my own journey. And you know, for, for, for you who, who know me a little bit and, and for some people who know me, they've known that I had a heart attack when I was 33. And after that, I became very obsessive about my health. I became very obsessive about how many hours I was putting in the office. So if I hadn't known about you know my own my own focus and my own energy and multitasking and my health back then, it would have saved me a lot of effort, and a lot of pain. But um, obviously, worked through that. Got some great strategies and that sort of stuff now. So I, I became very very obsessive, and now I'm starting to. To balance out, and like when I, you know, when I was 33, I gave up alcohol, I gave up red meat, I gave up dairy, I gave up coffee, um, I, I stopped a whole bunch of stuff that I had been doing prior to then. And now, you know, occasionally I'll have a glass of, you know, occasionally I'll just sort of relax a little bit, walk the walk the middle path, but again, still being very healthy most of the time. It's it's vegetarian most of the, you know, all the time. It's vegetarian all, most of the time. It's it's raw whole foods, and. Um, Saying if I if I'm good eighty percent of the time, then I can play out twenty percent of the time. Because no one likes the guy at the Christmas party who refuses to eat the chocolate. You know? <laughs> well, this is true. I mean, in Western life, trying to be uh, the full vegetarian, like you know, it's uh, I believe, but being balanced is great. And having sometimes some people may need a little bit of say white meat, red meat, because it's in their DNA from their yeah. grandparents from a different country that they migrated yeah, yeah. to, and. The food may not be as good as when they were when they were children. I mean, mm. from the health aspect, there's a massive epidemic coming in, and you've learned um, subconsciously at 33, you were taught at the conscious level, wow, I've got to, i got to like tweak my nutrition here a bit if I want to move forward, and then mm. plan to gift in other people's lives. And not only you did that, you know, I mean, you've interviewed some very influential people who are successful from their own fields, and yeah. that led you on that journey, and like. That's why, like the, the master science from numerology and astrology, what I'm trying to create with the ESP code is be more specific and trying to pl apply it in a practical business-like manner mm -hmm. uh, for, to help people. And, um, you know, some people don't get it. Some people may not be, especially in the business side of things, they may not understand it from the, what I'm saying, but you, because you forced, you, you had a pivot and you, you raised another level of, awen of awareness you began to understand some of these metaphysical uh, esoteric principles. And these principles were practiced to help people. And if people understand the Bible is so written in code, it ex has so much wisdom in there. If they just let the words jump out to them and not let someone else's footnotes tell them what it means. Yeah. Um, and that can help a lot of people. Cause you mentioned, you know, it was the paganism and they looked upon upon this, but there, it, there's wisdom in every book. And I believe there's deep wisdom in every book. Um, would that be fair to say? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I was I was brought up in a religious home. My my father became Catholic so he could marry into into my mother's family, um, and so he had to study you know Catholicism from the outside in, and that was that was sort of drummed into us as kids. It was more of an academic study than you know my mum had grown up in in that background. Um, and you know, because of my dad's study of Catholicism, I became more interested in studying other religions and going, what else is there? You know, what, what do Hindus believe? What do Buddhists believe? And you know, what about this? And what about the Mormons and, and that sort of stuff? So if anybody ever wants to come and knock on my door and you know, try and talk to me about Jesus or whatever, I say, look, I've got like 26 Bibles in my house. You know, I've got the New King James, I've got the Old King James, I've got the New Living Translation, because I like to look at all the different ones. Mm -hmm. And I will read from multiple sources. You know, some of my greatest friends are Muslim, some of my greatest friends are Hindus, and a, a lot of my friends are Buddhist. And you learn so much. I think it was um, Muhammad Ali who said all religions contain truth. But, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the one truth. It's like saying a, a puddle contains water, a cup of tea contains water, coffee contains water, orange juice contains water. Um, but you've actually just got to dig through some stuff. And obviously, 
some of the stuff that's in the Christian Bible is allegorical, it's fantasy, it's pulled from other sources, and it even, you know, Galatians contradicts um, the, the Old Testament by, by saying that Abraham and, and Sarah were actually a fictitious story made up about the mountains. Um, so there's, there's lots of things in there you say, oh, well, maybe that happened, maybe that didn't happen, but what does it mean to me? Mm -hmm. What does that actually mean to me? And how is that going to affect my life? You know, do I need to believe that Jesus healed six blind men on one day, or maybe it was actually like one a day for six days? Who cares? You know, how does that affect me? Maybe I can, I can be metaphorically doing the same thing by opening people's eyes, by educating people, you know, by taking people who are working away in the darkness and believing there's only one way to make money is by going to work for someone else for 40 hours a week for 40 years. Maybe I can actually enlighten someone like that. So as I say, there's, there's a lot of truths out there. And when you, when you compare all the books together, you get back to this one fundamental thing. So the Christian Bible says, you know, there was nothing and then God spoke and the world was created. And the, the, back in the Hindu text and back in the Buddhist text, it says everything is vibration, which is why they do a lot of chanting and that sort of stuff, because their vibration can affect the vibration of the world. And then you throw the religious books out the window and say, let's just deal with quantum physics. And quantum physics says everything is vibration. <laughs> the vibration of you, your mindset, whether you're observing the experiment, will actually affect the outcome of the experiment. So there is truth everywhere. Sometimes you just got to dig a little bit and pull it apart. But even the, the groundbreaking science that they're doing today and the oldest historical religious book that you can find, they are aligned. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Religion can, is science. I mean, the Old Testament is the New Testament because still the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. There's nuggets there that you can get from one old to the new and connect it. And everything is um, uh, 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 vibration, light, frequency, energy. And that's why the celestial planets play a role in us. And if people believe in, I'm a strong believer, the sun and moon are very close to us. That's why it's playing an energetic pull. And hence your identity numbers, which derive in your movement in life, and your numbers, your journey. Uh, it, it, it's it, like you said, this sort of wisdom can help avoid 20, 30, 40 years of heartache ahead of time within mm, 30 mm, seconds. Mm. And this type of wisdom should be implemented in schools, like what we're yeah. talking about now. Like, you know, the, it can help so many people. Um, and it stops the fear, the anxiety, the, the worry, and what have you, and, and, and gets people to then be focused on their gifts and then pay it forward to help people and creativity mm. and clarity. Um, what's one of the problems that you've had that you overcome and then and other viewers and listeners out there can do the same, like in your, along your journey? I think um, definitely, I mean, the, the health is, is one that underpins everything. And, you know, in, in my sort of early years, in my, my, my 20s and in my early 30s, for me, it was just all about the money because I wanted shiny things. I wanted to have the fast car and I wanted to have the big house and that sort of stuff because you, you're kind of brainwashed a little bit by, by what you see on TV and what you see in the magazine. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't really a spiritual aspect to my life. You know, I, I did have a bit of religion, but it wasn't really a spiritual aspect to my life. And I was chasing after the money without actually thinking what comes next. And you know, as, as a business coach, when people come to me now and say, look, I want to make an extra $10 million or I want to make an extra million dollars or whatever, I always ask them why. I go, because um, I want to buy a Winnebago. I say, why? And they go, oh, because I want to travel around Australia. Or well, why do you want to do that? Oh, because I want to spend more time with my family and show them what this great country has to offer and blah, blah, blah. Go, cool. Okay. So it's not actually about the money. It's about spending more time with their family. And maybe that's, you know, they think that's going to take a million dollars on a Winnebago, but maybe we can restructure their working life so they can work, you know, two hour days instead of 12 hour days and they can, they can spend more time with their family. Or maybe we can restructure their working life so they can actually operate from anywhere in the world, which you can do these days because of the internet and that sort of stuff. So they could be literally traveling the country and still running their business at the same time. It always it, it becomes something more than the money. And um, Warren Buffett said that money is like manure. If you pile it up in one area, it stinks. But if you spread mm. it around, it helps things to grow. It's, so, it's it's funny with the mindset of like you said the mindset of strategy. I remember watching, when you've traveled, you watch a lot of stuff, and I watch like say a lot of movies or documentaries on the plane. Mm. And there was a documentary on Warren Buffett and saying how his core team, his main core team of twenty to thirty people or so forth, have been with him since the say the inception of Berkshire Hathaway. He's um he's come and and he's very had informal meetings. He doesn't they're not like 
you know, board of directors meetings with Amir Seth, or it's just been the same core family hub. And I mm. find it fascinating to be one of the most, you know, wealthiest person on the planet. And that's his principle that he's had. He's yeah. kept that. And, and uh, I believe that's because it's the energy and the frequencies and it's that, that environment of everyone just being, you know, he's, he's like, like, he's got like a fun, like attitude and he's brought that obviously to the business side. But I mean, you know, Berkshire Hathaway is one of the, and he gave quite his wealth away to Bill Gates, but we're talking about strategies that they don't teach you this at all. Mm. You only may pick up a nugget from documentaries. And that's the good thing about if you know how to discern sometimes through a lot of TV or even the YouTube, because there's a lot of information coming um, at people. What would you say to people in terms of strategy and clarity, how they, they, they can succeed in business? It, it definitely starts with the mindset. And, you know, most of us, I'm, I'm, I'm generalizing, of course, but there, there's this a survey that came out recently that said 84% of Australians hate where they're going on Monday morning. Mm. So I'm thinking, okay, school has, has programmed us, the education system or the schooling system schools you like a school of fish to all be the same. And you're all taught this academic way of being and you've got to you know, learn this and then spit it back out and get your resume and get your job and you whinge about your boss and you whinge about your job because no one likes their job and no one likes their boss. And that's just how it is, right? But then there's some people who actually rebel against the schooling system because they're not academic. They might like working with their hands. These guys might be the truck drivers or the, or the tradies or something like that. And a lot of times these guys will do very poorly at school because they're not academic. They prefer to use their hands. When they, when they leave school is when they have their great time. And then they'll actually create a business and they'll do things differently because they weren't infected by the, by the schooling system. I think a lot of the people, if you, if you look at, you know, Oprah Winfrey, Richard Branson, Zuckerberg, um, Buffett, a lot of these guys never, ever graduated college, never, ever graduated university. They don't have degrees and diplomas. And yet these are some of the, the stalwarts of business and multiple billionaires who don't actually have that education. So changing the mindset to release you from thinking like a schooling system to thinking like this is the way it's got to be. And you do have to work 40 hours a week because I don't see Richard Branson working 40 hours a week in each one of his businesses. It's literally impossible because he's got over 300 businesses on the go. Mm. You know? It's learning these things that you don't learn. But first of all, you've got to let go of the ego because the ego will tell you you're the most important person in the room. You're the CEO. You've got to do everything. You've got to do all the hiring and the firing. And if you walk away from the business for a weekend, the business will implode and collapse. So getting rid of the, the mindset, getting rid of the ego and empowering yourself enough to say, you know what, I'm going to find someone who's smarter than me. I'm going to find a manager who's smarter than me. I'll come up with a few ideas and I'll let someone else do the hiring and firing. And, you know, I mean, I was, I was chatting to you this morning saying my assistant made this appointment for me and I wasn't even aware of it until 10 o'clock last night. Um, I had no way of contacting you. But my assistant is now hiring her own assistants. I tried to hire a couple of assistants for her because she was getting busy, but I'm just too nice. I'm just like, oh, yeah, you look good. Come on board. Um, and the person turns up two minutes late for their interview. I'll let that go. But she, no way. Mm -hmm. She'll sack him for that. You know, she's very rigid. She's very disciplined. And I go, wow, that's, that's kind of a bit cruel. But that's good for me because sometimes I can be too soft. Sometimes I can be too forgiving. So I need someone in my business who's very stringent. And if you don't respond to the email within five days, she'll sack you. And if you turn up two minutes late for a meeting, she will sack you. And I just go, whoa. But again, you know, Rich, Richard Branson seems to be this gregarious, happy-go-lucky, sort of warm kind of guy. Would you want him flying your airplane? No. Would you want him to be the guy who's working on the engines? No, because he looks like he's got almost zero attention to detail. But hiring other people who are smarter than you at very specific things. And this is why your, your accountant doesn't teach you how to surf. This is why your electrician or your carpenter who started their own business shouldn't be doing their own book work. They should have someone else doing that. It's, okay. it's profiling um, with strengths and weaknesses and complementing them. Mm. Like in terms of like the number side of things, like, you know, your identity is a six number two. So if I want to do a business strategy, I'll, I'll think of numbers that complement my eight. You know, if I want to do a travel I'll go to a country that compliments me, say it's a five. I wanted to hold a seminar. I'll do it with a combination where it's a three, five, eight to stack the probabilities in my favor. So yeah. profiling is, is important. And I found a lot of the social media has become people are using it, but they just get distracted from the, the, what, what's the, the, the purpose, I believe, is to spread value, true value. And a lot of people, 
it's just getting lost because it's see the good thing, the internet is good and bad because it's fragmenting a lot of the energy and it's just getting it dissipates if you know how to harness it as you said before you can step outside of that and then share forward you give because some people don't have the ability to be i'm a believer god gave us both sides of the brain the left hand side and the right hand side so we can be artistic poetic but we also can be logical and analytical mm. it's just people uh, are not eating correctly so nutrition is affecting it with the health and the mind and, and if this if the mind's not connected to the body and people are not meditating say or doing doing some form of some angle of meditation or cleansing the negative from you know sea soul because we're getting bombarded with other people's energies and frequencies we are all light mm. and because some people vibrate at a different frequency than others they may catch other people's negativity for a minute sense of time napoleon hill mentioned this in out with the devil but he said in the sense if you're eating and your system's like a plum of filth and it's clogged up it's clogging up your brain and mm. you know every time you're sipping too much of the alcohol you're attracting the negative side of the spirit you know, and once the body cleanses, that spirit doesn't want to stay it will go but that type of talk, if people understand it, 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 it's penetrating them into the business life. It's not taught though. And I believe that as at the higher level needs to be to help the person in their business life or personal life. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I, even as, you, as you're talking about the food affecting the thinking, um, I, I, was thinking I, I went to a gym many years ago and there was a sign in the toilet and, and there was something along the lines of, you know, if, you're, if your pee is short and dark, then your thoughts will be short and dark. And if your pee is long and clear, then your, your mind will be, you know, your thoughts will be long and clear. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. It's an interesting way of looking at, looking at hydration because you don't actually think about that. And sometimes when you're in a bad mood, you just think, oh, I'm in a bad mood because of what that person done and someone cut me off or because so-and-so was late for a meeting or whatever it happened to be. You're actually blaming the external circumstances. But the fact is that if you had adequate nutrition, if you had adequate sleep, if you had adequate hydration, the little things that happen aren't going to upset you so much. And, and this uh, is something I didn't learn. And again, you don't, you don't learn this at school. Like they tell you at school, like eat bananas and eat broccoli, but you don't actually learn why. Mm -hmm. And every, every other thing they teach you at school, there's a science behind, you know, this is why the chemical reaction proceeds, or this is why we, we study the book in this way, or this is how we study a painting or, or whatever. But, you know, learning about, for, for me, learning that there's four times as much potassium in the banana skin and there isn't a banana. That's important. You know, if I'm doing a lot of working out, if I need some potassium, I'm going to eat the banana with the skin on. This stuff is, is important. And hydration, like hydration, it's a massive one. Absolutely massive. And, and water's, like, water's very important. Yeah. Yeah, water's very important because we're, the body's water, the body's 70% water, the brain, you know, 90, 94, depending yeah. on which report you use. But water actually communicates. It's, tr mm. it's a transform of energy and the ether, air, that's why oxygen and water is the most, two most important things to our mind, body and soul to feed. We are getting bombarded by the ether and water communicates. It's been proven water can jump from beacon to beacon. It communicates. That's why there's collective consciousness and mm. that's why the celestial planets are playing a role on people because I'm a big believer if you think in the Bible, we talk about the firmament and we're talking and there's a big movement happening with this conversation and i'm going to be bringing on a speaker that i'll probably go for a three-hour talk to explain to people how this is explained in all the ancient texts mm. this is what's going to really start to help people to understand what really is going on with the collective consciousness because that can travel from any side of the corner of the earth that quick mm. um but that's another topic uh, <laughs> that, that's our quantum physics all over again isn't it that's quantum physics yeah, 501 yeah. Um, tell me, Jeremy, if people want to f learn more about you, uh, where's the best place they can go and find out and, and about your coaching um, and so forth? They can jump onto my website. It's number two, number four, H-O-U-R, so 24-hour, spelled out, 24hourwealthcoach.com. Uh -huh. Or if you search Google or Facebook or YouTube or anything for 24-hour wealth coach, I've got about 300 educational videos on YouTube now. Wow. And there's a lot of free content out there. And... As, as a special gift for your people, mate, I'd, I'd like to offer them a, a copy of one of my books. So awesome. All Thank you. Send me an email and say they want to get a book about health or a book about entrepreneurship or a book, book about making money because I've, I've done three so far. I'm working, working on number four and five. Nice. Um, but yeah, definitely. My, my first book was all about the money because I was all about the money. And my second book was all about the mindset and the entrepreneurship because that's the space I was in at the time. And my third book was all about the health. So wherever you want to be or maybe you want to grab all three shoot me an email and thank you much appreciated
Thank you. That's much appreciated. I mean, uh, and I'm a big believer too, like ta having tangible books is good to read because it's, it's, your fingers are touching the paper and it's, it's transmitting in the mind a little bit more. I mean, I know there's, you know, eBooks and so forth, flicking on iPad, whatever, but um, books are, uh, are amazing. There, there's book, energies and frequencies have books. My library's got books. I haven't read a lot of them, but those words are still coming into our brains, whether we realize it or not. So I always carry a book with me whenever I'm driving. Um, I have my book as well. It's, uh, I think I may have emailed it to you, but I will email it to you as well. Um, but yeah, this has been a great conversation. We could, we could talk for hours in terms of strategy because you, because you've interviewed 150 people. You've obviously, I'm a big believer in pattern recognition and you can start to pick up successful habits and non-successful habits from a different array of speakers. Cause obviously an entrepreneur say, or a politician such as Arnold Schwarzenegger is different to a person like say Richard Branson. Mm. and they're going to have different attributes. Like I've, I've often also been told Richard Manson may be an extra, but when you get to know him, he's actually quite introverted in his mm, in, off the camera, much. so to yeah, speak. Yeah. And that explains it in his numbers as well. Mm. Um, so uh, what's one final key, key takeaway you can give to the viewers out there in terms of, it's a, you know, they're, they're about to go on their journey and they may be a little bit hesitant. There's a bit of fear. Or is this, is this the right way to do? What, 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 you know, there's always that, that, sense of am i doing the correct thing what what, yeah. what can you tell them to help them and they go yep i'm doing the right thing here i go i guess the reassurance stanley is there's multiple correct things um okay. it's like if, if you learned line dancing because you grew up in you know southern central america or something like that then that's okay you know and, and dancing is a good exercise it's good exercise for the left and the right brain good exercise for the body but maybe you want to learn hip-hop maybe you want to learn tap dancing there's there's thousands of different types of dance Okay, there's, there's probably at least several hundred different types of meditation. And again, all the people I interviewed, they were all meditators, but they all had their slightly different tweak on it. Mm -hmm. And following multiple paths, I mean, so, someone said to me last night that, hey, remember that Amazon started selling books. 23 years ago, Amazon started selling books in bricks and mortar stores. And that business was not profitable. They tried something else and they tried something else and they tried something else. And what's Amazon doing now? They've got Amazon TV, Amazon Prime. They make a lot more money with them off that than they ever did selling books and obviously selling goods on, on the internet. So you know, after 20 years and after like 16 or, or, or 17 missteps where they actually lost money, lost money, lost money, lost money, they kept trying something new. So whatever you've tried, if it didn't work, keep trying. And you can have a look and say, oh, I'm gonna run my business like Richard Branson. I'm gonna start 400 companies. And maybe that's not for you. Maybe you're more like a Zuckerberg who should just start one company and just focus on that mm -hmm. like nothing else. Uh, but again, Zuckerberg had to stick at it for seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years of losing money before all of a sudden he became an overnight billionaire. So, mm. to speak. so there's, there's lots of different paths. And you know, I've, I've tried a few paths myself. I've, I've had, I think, 12 or 13 different businesses. And I fell into business coaching accidentally because people kept coming and asking me advice about how I ran my different businesses. I never set up myself to say, I'm gonna be a business expert. I was just learning along the way. And this is a business I've been running now full time for seven years after I sold my other businesses and tried to retire. I, I just fell into it accidentally. So you never know what's gonna be your path. And unless you try line dancing and hip hop dancing and tap dancing and whatever else, you're not gonna know which one that you enjoy, which one that really empowers you the most. And same with Amazon and same with, obviously, if you've been on Facebook for more than five years, you know it's changed a lot. So step out and allow, allow your entrepreneurial creative spirit to grow. Allow your business to grow. Allow your ideas to grow because we're in a world that's always changing. You're either growing or you're decaying. That's the, that's the way of our world. Mm -hmm. So definitely try multiple paths before deciding, okay, this is the one for me. Awesome, awesome wisdom here, uh, the viewers and listeners. Uh, Jeremy Britton, again, from Queensland, Australia, keynote speaker, author, and business coach. Thank you for sharing your time and only having a few hours sleep and still coming on the call. I mean, that's the sign of an amazing entrepreneur. So, my friend, thank you. We'll keep in touch. I want to see if we can, you know, uh, we, I'll send you my book, my viewers get your books, and see what we can do in business moving forward. And when I do come to Queensland, I'll see if I can come on your show as well. Uh, Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you, thank you my friend. Take Cheers, care. Sir. Blessing. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you.